Okay, guys, so like I said, the rest of mechanics is just a walk in the park, okay? Um, technically, you can do these questions that we have already. You can do it without vectors, um, but I just quite like showing you it with vectors as well in case some of you decide this vector method is preferential for you. Um, but we're just going to look at what you can do for projectiles um, using... Uh, vectors. So it's a good little recap of memorizing, not memorizing, revising some of these things. It says the ball is struck for, by a racket from a point A, which has position vector 20J. So immediately I'm just going to write that out as 0, 20. And what do you think this position vector is actually going to be called? What should I call this? R0. I'm going to call that R0, okay, because that's where it starts, uh, relative to a fixed origin O. Immediately after being struck, the ball has velocity 5I 8J. What do you think I'm going to call this? U. I'm going to call that this is u, which is 5, 8. Now, remember, you'd know how to do this one usually, because on the diagram here, we know it's going 5 across, and we know that it's going 8 up. Um, mm -mm -mm, where i and j are unit vectors horizontally and vertically, blah, blah, blah. After being struck, the ball travels freely under gravity. If it travels freely under gravity, what can you tell me about its acceleration? 9.80. Okay, so it's 9.8 downwards. 9.8 downwards, what is that as a vector? Zero. No, it's 0 minus 9.8. Maybe you should go back to this seat. No. Something's gone wrong over there. <laughs> so you've got, that's not nice. So you've got that the acceleration is 0 minus 9.8. And we want to find out when it strikes the ground at point B. Find the speed of the ball. OK, so part A wants us to find the speed of the ball 1.5 seconds after being struck. OK, I'm going to grab all of this information and kind of put it written out now together. So I have found out that the acceleration is 0 minus 9.8, that the initial velocity is 5, 8. And I've been told for part A of the question that t is equal to 1.5. And what am I interested to find out here? V. I'm going to try and find out what V is equal to. What connects those? V equals U plus AT. Now, you're probably thinking, hang on a second, how can I deal? Normally, I used to do horizontal and vertical, and I do them completely separate to each other, because one of them was GCSE style, the horizontal, and the other one was SUVAT style. So how can I do them together? And you'll see what happens when we put them together. So when I say V, it is equal to U, which is 5, 8, plus the acceleration, which is 0, minus 9.8, multiplied by 1.5. I don't usually do the multiply symbol, though, do we? So we get 1.5 here. So what's the horizontal part of it going to be? 5. five. Why is the horizontal part 5 from previous knowledge? Because it just doesn't change. There's no acceleration. So it does actually work. So in the horizontal part, we just get that the V equals U. Amazing. V equals U because there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. And then we just get 8 minus 9.8 times 1.5. Which is minus 6.7. So just think previously what you would have done is you would have done SUVAT vertically and you would have said that U was equal to 8, A was equal to minus 9.8, T was equal to 1.5 and you would have done V equals U plus AT and you would have got minus 6.7. And then you would have remembered the horizontal would still be 5 and you would put those back together to find out the speed because they want the speed. Find the, find the magnitude. So because I want the speed, I'm going to do the square root of 5 squared plus 6.7 squared, which is 8.36 meters per second to three significant figures. So you could have done this without this technique. I just wanted to show it to you because it's in the book. And it's kind of nice to see that it, it works. It works really nicely. It then says, find an expression for the position vector r of the ball relative to O at time t seconds. So this really does feel like vectors is going to be more useful than our previous technique. Although technically we could have done this previously, we could have just worked out where it was and, and made that as an expression, okay? So I'm going to, for part B of the question, 
I've got all of this information is still true, well, apart from t, so I'm actually, maybe I'll write it out again. Acceleration is still 0 minus 9.8, and u is still 5, 8. We want to know an expression for it at time t, so I guess we're going to say that t is equal to t, and I want to know an expression for its position vector r, so I'm going to try and find out what r is equal to. Now, we know usually if we had s, a, u, and t, s, a, u, and t is uh, c. s equals u, t plus a half a, t squared. So we're going to say r equals, what's the difference? r equals r naught plus u, t plus a half a, t squared. So we're just going to shove everything into the formula. So we get r naught oh, was 0, 20, right? R0 was 0, 20. We then get ut, which is 5, 8, multiplied by t. And then we get a half of the acceleration, which is going to be 0 minus 4.9 t squared. And that's all of part b done. If you just have a look at this when we blend it into one single thing, we get the position vector is 5t. And then we get 20 plus 8t minus 4.9t squared. Why is the horizontal part so simple? No acceleration. It is just the position equals the speed times time. So the horizontal position is just speed times time. The vertical position has got its starting point from the origin. And then you've got ut plus a half a t squared. That extra 20 is because it doesn't start at the origin. It's because it started at 20 meters above. And now it says, determine the distance OB. OK, well, B was this thing over here, right, when it hits the floor. What do you know about the position vector of B? The j part is zero. We know over here, I don't know how far along it is, but I definitely know that the j part is zero. And this is actually what you would have done previously. If you could have done this anyway, you wanted to find out when it hit the floor, you'd have looked at the vertical motion and you would have just said, oh, I'm going to find out how long it takes to travel 20 down. So it's, you don't have to do it this way. I'm just wanting to show you it as an alternative kind of way. So we know for part C that the j component is equal to 0. So we get 20 plus 8t minus 4.9t squared equals 0. And we can use our trusty quadratic equation solver. So you've got, I'm, I do believe you, I just like to do it myself as well. Minus 4.9, 8, and 20. So you get that either t is equal to 2.9953, or t is minus 1.362. But you can't have a negative. So the time is, well, let's just leave it as that, 2.9953. What do you now have to do with that value? You then have to substitute that back into the position vector. So we now know that r would be equal to 5 times this, 5 times 2.9953. And what would the bottom part be? Zero, because I've just worked out I know it's zero. So we get... Fourteen point nine seven blah 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 zero. So we get that the distance from O to B, O to B being ch -ch -ch, from here to here, is basically just what this this part here is going to be. So O B is just fifteen point zero meters to three significant figures. Again, you could have done this whole question without this technique. So what I'm going to use this as an opportunity for us to do is to go straight in with two more challenging style exam questions, which are the two on the next pages, OK? So we've been sat down for ages. I kind of feel like we should get up and actually do some stuff on the whiteboards, OK? Let's get up. You disagree? Well, it's, that's on me to make the decision. So. Come on, let's do it. It'll, be, it'll be, give us a bit more energy. We haven't done this for a while. We've been getting a bit lazy, OK? So you're going to do this exam question here, which is one of the official ones. And then this one is like an old exam question to do afterwards. That